So this is a great technique, especially the way I'm going to show you how to build up this background texture. It's like a really neat organic look. And uh, especially with this double embossment method where you get like multiple layers of relief from your embossment. It's pretty cool stuff. Okay, for this method, I'm going to need some glaze. I'm going to be using Proceed Full Body Glazing Medium. I need some colors. These are all faux colors by Faux Effects, and I'm using Van Dyke Brown, Antique Honey, and Antique Mahogany. For a plaster, I'm going to use Faux Effects Plaster Tex, and then a few other colors. These are all aqua colors by Faux Effects. I'm going to use brown, white, and yellow ochre. Okay, for the first step in this process, we're going to use Faux Effects Plaster Tex, and I'm also going to use, I've got some Proceed Titanium White, some Faux Effects Earth Brown, Faux effects brown and faux effects yellow ochre. And we're gonna mix that up. I'm gonna make up one gallon of plaster text, and to that I'm gonna add four tablespoons of earth brown, one tablespoon of the white, a half a tablespoon of the brown, and a half a tablespoon of the yellow ochre. Okay, I'm doing this on kind of a smaller surface area because generally I wouldn't do this finish on an entire wall surface. I do this a lot on like kitchen hoods. Okay, so I've got that plaster text I talked about mixed up. So, you know, I've gone from white to this kind of like nice kind of warmer color and for this application I'm going to use my hands so definitely want to wear gloves and what we're going to do is just take this stuff I'm going to stick it on doesn't matter how it goes on all right the first rule is you got to get your material on the surface before you manipulate it okay so I'm just going to start spreading it around like I'm finger painting all right and you want 100 percent coverage because we're going to get this in one coat So spread it on an area and get, you know, get it kind of consistent in thickness. Okay, now we need to create our texture and diffuse the look. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to take my hands and I'm not going to push into the plaster. I'm just going to ride the tip of the plaster and I'm going to do just figure eights. Okay, and I'm going to vary the pressure so I'll kind of bounce in and off. And the reason I'm doing a figure eight is because it creates this completely like random, like non-contrived effect. And that's kind of the texture that I'm creating right now. All right. All right, now my hand applied plaster text is dry. First thing I need to do is uh, 220 grit sandpaper and just go over the top. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is some embossing and I'm actually gonna do a two layer stencil embossing. Um, I like to do that because a lot of times when you see embossing, it's just, it's got relief, but it doesn't have any like multiple depth to it. So it's a little trickier to do, it takes a little longer, but I really like the end result. So this is a Melanie Royals World Design Studio stencil. And uh, it's got these two center pieces. We're going to lay the more complicated one in first because overlaying the second embossing is a little trickier. So this is a simpler design, so I'm going to do that second. And this also has like kind of a scrolling border pattern that we'll put on too. So I'll get this mocked up and then we'll do the first embossing. Okay, so I got my first stencil up here. I got it taped off nice and straight. Like usual, I lay off a uh, tape line across my entire area that's up hit with a level so that I just can like set my stencil on that and I have good reference and keep it straight. So I'm going to take the same plaster text we use to apply with our hands over the majority and we're just going to emboss with the same stuff. So I'll just take a putty knife and just ride right over the top. And then come back in and kind of rough up my plaster a little bit so it's not totally nice and smooth. All right. Grab this and just kind of let it come straight off. 
Okay, so now I get the first layer of my center on. So now I can start laying in my banding that's gonna come off the sides of it. And uh, this is it. And uh, like we said, we actually work on the job side and all our stencils and stuff look pretty beat to hell. And I just need to kind of reference this inner circle off my center. Tape it down. And now I can emboss this one too. Usually what I'll do with the two la layer embossing is I'll do the first embossing like not real thick and kind of smoother. So it's a little easier to apply the second layer of embossing. But then on the second one I'll go like super thick and really kind of beat up just to give it a lot of depth. Okay. So, let's pull that one out, and now I need to clean this off, flip it over, and I can hit the other side. So do that, and we're going to let it set up overnight, and then we'll continue with our overlay. Okay, so now that this is dry, it's time to set up our second layer of embossing on this guy. So I've got my second layer stencil. I still have my tape line set up, so I know exactly where I need to reference the bottom of this stencil. So what I'm going to do is just line it up with the bottom and line it up right in the middle. Okay, so I have my stencil set up. I've got my plaster. As you can see, this is definitely not right up against the surface because it's sitting on top of my first embossment. So you just gotta be a little careful when you're laying in this one. You just wanna go piece by piece and just try and avoid getting a lot of material under the stencil so it's gonna bleed and ruin your image. And this one, like I said before, is gonna go on a lot thicker, but that's what's going to make it kind of cool, is you're going to have this double relief, and just kind of add more interest to your embossment. Alright, so as you can see, I got it on there very thick. <clears throat> so first thing I'll do is get my tape on the top, unadhered. And then we'll just bring it out. Okay, and that's gonna take a while to dry and then we can sand it back. Don't even worry about like, I mean, as you can see, it's very thick, but we'll get it cleaned up. Okay, so I got my two layers of embossment, so I just need to let that dry and then I can sand it. Okay, so now that my second embossing of plaster text is dry, I need to come in and just give it a good sand. I'm gonna use a sanding block so that I can get it nice and flat. So I've got a lot of really high peaks sitting up here because of how thick I put it on. So I'm just gonna start working on that first. Okay, for this next step, I've got Golden Pro Seed Full Body Glazing Medium. I've got Faux FX Antique Mahogany, Faux FX Antique Honey, and Faux FX Van Dyke Brown. These are all faux colors, so they're a little more potent, and I'm gonna use them straight out of the bottle. But the first thing that I need to do is apply a slip coat, so these colors kind of slide over my surface a little better. So I'm gonna take my Full Body Glazing Medium, and I'm just gonna brush the coat of that over the entire surface of this. Okay, so now that I have my sample slip coated, I'm gonna start with uh, let's start with antique mahogany, and just gonna start applying that in some areas. And then I'm gonna move on to my antique honey. And 
Then uh, we'll apply my Van Dyke brown. All right, now that I have all my colors on, I'll go back to this big brush I was using to apply the slip coat. And I just wanna kind of fill in these voids and make sure I have 100% coverage of my plaster. Kind of blend the colors a little bit too. Okay, now uh, I've got my color 100% covered, so now I'll take my flat pad of Viva or Shop Towel and just start kind of pulling some color back off. Okay, so now I've got my color on, I just need to let this set up and then I can do my final overstain and then we'll do a little sanding, kind of do some enhancement stuff. Coat on this, I'm just gonna take a squirt bottle with some water and just give it a light mist. Then I'm gonna take my Van Dyke Brown Fill Color again, straight out of the bottle. And the reason I misted this just to help me get it across the texture. If you're working a big surface, you're concerned about time, go ahead and use a glaze as a slip coat again and not just water. And I'm just gonna brush this stuff back over the top to kind of even out this color. And if you're having trouble moving it, just means you might need a little more water. Okay, now I'm just gonna go in with my shop towel or Viva and start just kind of manipulating it back, taking it off. And I'm gonna leave it pretty heavy in the crevices around my embossment just to help enhance that. Okay, so I've got my color where I want it. It's all manipulated. So the last thing I'll do, and this is kind of an extra option, you can leave it just the way it is if you want, is I just take a sanding block and just lightly take it over the top of my texture just to enhance it just a little more. Okay, so that's it. That's I got it where I want it, and uh, you can really see it pops out this embossing, especially the two different levels of it. Um, that's like the best part of doing the two overlay embossing.